cult of Hasanabi. Early have footage, have text message communications, have back and forth conversations, and even a rape kit. And, and the British authorities would be like, Oi, just having a bit of mint shanking is consensual, yeah. What the fuck's going on in England, man? The police there just, there is nothing that will get them to call rape rape, okay? Just stop it up, Anta. It's a day in the life of a true Brexit geezer, right? What the fuck is this? What is happening in this fucking country, dog? She was 16, it's the fucking age of consent, lads. Simple as. In 2015, controversial alpha male influencer Andrew Tate was arrested over an allegation of rape in the UK following complaint one woman who supplied the police with messages sent by Tate in which he wrote, I love R-wording you. Vice World News reported earlier this month that Tate was arrested on suspicion of sexual assault and physical abuse in 2015. In 2019, the CPS declined to pursue charges against Tate for any of these allegations. The woman who supplied the police with messages sent by Tate said the police told her charges were not brought because there was an ounce of doubt in the case. Sidekick Nolan, thank you for the 10 gifted subs. X Dark Strider, thank you for the 10 gifted subs as well, by the way. Among the dozens of messages and voice notes received by Vice World News that Tate sent the woman is a voice note in which he appears to admit to raping her, saying, am I a bad person? Because the more you didn't like it, the more I enjoyed it. I fucking loved how much you hated it. It turned me on. Why am I like that? Why? The woman who will refer to as Amelia. Wait, is this the special report? Oh, this is this is just another uh, piece of it. The woman who will refer to as Amelia is the third woman to reveal to Vice World News that they had po filed police complaints alleging sexual or physical abuse by Tate, an American British social media influencer and a former professional kickboxer who was arrested in Romania last month as a part of a separate rape and human trafficking investigation. This is like the SpongeBob meme, you know what I mean? I, I know this is like such a serious topic and and you know turning it into like light-hearted commentary is like crazy but uh it's like it's like fucking literally what is it like when you're the the patrick meme where it's like fucking you're showing patrick the thing the wallet it's like dude how many fucking instances will it take for a tater tot to comprehend that this guy is no good like i, I don't get it i don't get it i don't get it i don't understand it's like what the fuck is this? It's insane. All right, we're going to watch this trigger warning. The following contains graphic depictions of sexual assault and physical violence. Am I a bad person? Because the, the more you didn't like it, the more I... These voice notes were sent by Enjoyed Andrew it. Tate over a period of time to a woman accused the, accused him of rape. She reported the allegations to the police, but the prosecutors declined to prosecute. Am I a bad person? Because the, the more you didn't like it, the more I enjoyed it. I fucking loved how much you hated it. Turn me on. Why am I like that? Why? I am one of the most dangerous men on this planet. Sometimes you forget exactly how lucky you were to get fucked by me. Would you rather me pin you down and make you do things you didn't like, or would you rather fuck You didn't like that I was thinking I can do whatever I want to you. That's what it is. I'm the smartest person on this fucking planet. Are you seriously so offended I strangled you a little bit? You didn't fucking pass out. Chill the fuck out. Jesus Christ, I thought you were cool. What's wrong with you? That's insane. <laughs> like... That is uh, the holy fuck. So British authorities saw that and were like, no, it's all right. That's crazy. Just a bit of banter. Okay, got it. What the fuck? What needs to happen for British police to be like, okay, I guess that's like, you know, non-consensual. Which, ironic, by the way, Andrew Tate was able to avoid sexual assault charges in the uk but even then it wasn't enough for him because and these are not my words this is not my assessment these are his words he moved to romania because they were even more lax in romania about sexual assault remember that 
That's what he said. He literally said he went to Romania to avoid the the strict sexual assault standards that they have in the UK, which is ironic because now he's in fucking Romanian prison. Turns out the Romanian sexual assault uh, uh, investigation is a little bit more serious than the fucking Oibrovs, dude. Holy shit. That's crazy to me that, like, UK police literally was just like, yeah, see nothing wrong there, lads. I see nothing wrong there, lads. We don't care. What do you fucking mean, then? Just a little bit of banter. When the coppers raid your mansion and and look through and look through your Bugatti, yeah, I mean he is also like not very attractive, but that's besides the point. People just like refuse to see that he is chinless. JPB on Tate, Gaston or the redeemable beast? I stand for the latter, and so do the wise beauties. I mean, this is January. Wait, he tweeted this today. Bro, that's not real, right? You're fucking joking, right? That's that's crazy. There is no way this is real. Oh my God, it's real. He posted this. Oh my God. Holy shit. I mean, listen, motherfucker. Everyone is redeemable, okay? Everyone, everyone. That is at the heart of rehabilitation. Having a rehabilitative approach to justice. But like, you pick and choose, okay? You're picking and choosing when you think rehabilitation is achievable and why you think rehabilitation is achievable for a particular person, for you, Jordan Peterson, is very clearly motivated by how right-wing they are, okay? This dude is curious as to why his license is being questioned. Yeah, I. it's like insane. He also posted this banger. What? Is he in London right now? What the fuck's he doing? I I thought his he'd fucked uh, his daughter. Yeah. I thought like Andrew Tate actually fucked uh, Michaela Peterson, but she claims that that's not real. Here's the vice Do you special ever wonder report. why some people who you've never heard of before all of a sudden I have to pee everywhere. I'll be back. Andrew Tate, Andrew Tate is an Anglo-American kickboxer turned influencer whose extreme misogynist videos have helped make him the most viral man in the world. Bang out the machete, boom in her face, and then grip her up by the neck. Shut up, bitch! On December 29th, he and his brother were arrested by Romanian police as part of a rape and human trafficking investigation. The Matrix has attacked me. A few months before their arrest, I was in Romania trying to get access to their so-called secret society, the War Room. The War Room is the most powerful network on the face of the planet today. To get inside, I had agreed to endure a professional cage fight in Romania. I know he's gonna lose, but wow, he's actually in there. Along with a hundred Tate superfans. We shouldn't be slaves, we shouldn't be working nine to five jobs. I need to grow, I need to get better, I need to evolve. I'm not tough on myself. Nobody else will be. That's what I learned from Andrew Tate. It's shame you hold. Hold on to it. What I found out. My plan was to sow anarchy. Is that this recent arrest appears to be just the tip of the iceberg. This is definitely a hit piece. I don't saying, care. The real story. We've I'm clearly conquered the internet. Began years ago. There's not a single female complaining. Do you think there's not a single no, no, female no. complaining? Have you seen one? Tell me. My ex-boyfriend was radicalized by Andrew Tate. It's sweet. And I guess vulnerable to being brainwashed by Andrew Tate and his cult. People don't know what he's done.
Yeah, no, I didn't miss it. I know the journalist did a cage fight to get access to a, the war room and shit. Yeah. Um. So Amelia, uh, let's let's get back to the uh the 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 voice memos, right? So Amelia. Is the third woman to reveal to Vice World News that they had filed police complaints alleging sexual or physical abuse by Tate, an American British social media influencer, former professional kickboxer, was arrested in Romania last month as a part of a separate rape and human trafficking investigation. We are withholding the woman's identity as an alleged victim of sexual offenses and to prevent harassment by trolling uh, of by Tate's supporters. Okay. To other, two other women, one of whom says she was raped and the other whom says she was repeatedly strangled, went public with their experiences last week. They revealed that their initial complaints in 2015 to hurt for sure police uh, uh, took four years to pass the case to prosecutors, who then declined to prosecute. Nice. Amelia, who to this day does not know the identities of the other women, had her complaint handled as a part of the same investigation before CPS told the women in 2019 that there was no realistic prospect of a conviction. Um, Emile's experiences from the alleged rape in 2013 to learning that the Tate, that Tate would not be prosecuted to then watching him become one of the most famous people on the planet have left her feeling as though she is struggling every day, but she felt emboldened to go public with her story after seeing two other complainants speak out. She, she said she no longer wanted to live in fear of Tate and that she felt she had a duty to tell her story to potentially prevent other women from being hurt. Amelia said that she and Tate had been acquainted since 2009. The relationship turned romantic for the first time in 2013 after they bumped into each other and reconnected on a night out. That rape, she said, happened in November 2013, the first time Amelia went to Tate's flat after they had been dating for two or three weeks. She said the pair had previously kissed, but nothing more. Back then, he knew this. I'd only been with two people, she said. He knew what that meant to me. That act was very important to me. She said the pair were kissing on Tate's bed when he began trying to take off her clothes. She previously told him she said that she didn't want to have sex. He stopped, reassured her that nothing was going to happen, and that they continued kissing. After a while, she said she su he suddenly stopped and laid back on the bed. I got up and looked at him and went, what's wrong? She said this guy literally laid there and went... Holy fuck. I'm just debating whether I should R-word you or not. Amelia said she was stunned, unsure if it was just some sort of sick joke. She said she put her hand on his chest and said, don't be stupid, what are you talking about? Within an instant, he changed who he was, she said. It wasn't the same Andrew that I knew that was funny, that would make me laugh. It was like in his eyes, it was like his eyes went, and I didn't have a clue who that person was. Suddenly, she said, Tate grabbed their neck and started strangling me, forcing my trousers off me. I was trying to keep them on and he started screaming at me, take the fucking trousers off, bitch. The sudden outburst of violence from Tate, who was at the time a professional kickboxer, made Amelia feel powerless to fight back and fearful of how far the assault would go. Dude, I'm... This makes me angry at Andrew Tate's existence. This makes me angry at, like, the fact that he has so many fucking fans who uh, love him and adore him. But I, I'm not even kidding. The real monster in this story and... Andrew Tate is the monster here, obviously, but even a bigger monster exists. And that is the British fucking police. Holy shit, dude. The fact that, like, this was the witness testimony. The fact that this person also turned over records from WhatsApp of Andrew Tate confessing to his actions. And then the British police still fucking choosing not to prosecute this is, like, is unimaginable dude I'm losing my fucking mind like because you expect Andrew Tate to be a piece of shit you expect him to be the villain of the story but like there are still plenty of people on this planet that think cops are supposed to be the good guys they're supposed to defend you this is literally part of the fucking part of the job this is it this is the one job this is the job that you have to do which is solve crimes this is a crime It's tough since it's her word against his? No, as a matter of fact, it's not tough, okay? First of all, you think that that's tough. That's a you situation, okay? But it's not just that. In so many of these instances, in so many of these instances, it's not just like a third party being like, this person is a bad guy, okay? It's literally first party accounts, sometimes eyewitness testimony, 
that is like corroborating the actual events that unfolded. And then also, and guess what? This is a really rare one, an admission from the perpetrator. That's it. That's that's crazy. That's crazy. If you see an admission from the perpetrator and you go, I just, I can't get my fucking, get my mind around the fact that this guy who admitted to raping this person, raped this person. Well, he admitted it. What the fuck is wrong with you? At that point, you're not writing for Andrew Tate. You're just writing for rape, okay? You're not even a stan of Andrew Tate at that point. You're just a stan of rape. You're like, I'm a fan, and I'm defending the, the integrity of the concept of raping, okay? That's what you're doing. It's madness, dude. It's fucking crazy. This motherfucker admitted to doing this thing on a voice message, and you still go, oh, it's a he, should, he said she's a situation. No, it's literally a he said, he admitted situation, okay? That's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's bleak. That's scary. That's what the fuck. It's like walking into a precinct, okay, with a person stuck to your body because they shoved a knife into you. You hold on to the person and you carry them over to the precinct and the cops are like, so what happened to you exactly? And the guy who has the knife in you goes, I stabbed him. And the cops go, ah, it's, I guess we just simply cannot solve this fucking crime. You're free to go. It's insane. If that level of evidence is not enough to at least start a fucking investigation, then there is no amount of evidence that will cause you to get this investigation going. You are just not interested in solving sex Maybe crimes. That's it. That's it. That's it. You as a cop, whoever the fucking prosecutors were, whoever the cops were that were handling this situation, are just not interested in solving sex crimes, which is, of course, ironic because... Again, this isn't just anecdotal. There was a widespread study conducted in England and also Wales that showed that I'm right, that they literally did not, they refused to prosecute sex crimes in England for like years. They did. That's it. They just don't. They just don't cover it. They don't, they don't prosecute it. They don't investigate it. And they victim blame throughout the entire process. Holy fuck. I've never been strangled before. I don't know if he's going to stop. And I was so scared, she told Vice World News. It's like whenever you think about being in that situation, you think you're going to fight back. But I'm telling you, you don't. Because if you fight back, what else is he going to do to you? He's six foot three, champion kickboxer, for God's sake. Tate then raped her, Amelia said. As he did, she said, he continued to choke her, saying things like, who do you belong to? Even as she was unable to physically speak due to his hands constricting her throat. He's like, fucking say it, bitch. You're not fucking saying my name. Say my fucking name. Otherwise, I'll kill you. After assaulting her, Amelia said, Tate went to sleep with his arm around her while she lay awake for hours trying to process what had just happened. When she got home the next day, she recalls she cried in the bathtub and called a friend who helped spell out to her what had happened to her was rape. Vice World News, by the way, the fact that she needed a second party to be like, yeah, that was actually rape that happened to you is also a product of the patriarchal constructs that we exist under and the sexual violence that is so incredibly fucking normalized, okay? Like, this isn't even like a, oh, did you consent to it? Is it gray? Did I, like, not actually, uh, you know, consent uh, uh, enthusiastically? You know what I mean? Like, it's not even like that. Even in those circumstances, it's still usually sexual assault. Do not misunderstand me. But, like, there is no fucking gray area. It's just literally just straight up, open and shut. This is the textbook example, right, of rape. It's the textbook definition. It's like what literal fucking rapists will kind of point to to be like, well, it wasn't like that when they're talking about rape, Okay. Do you understand? Because like a lot of people, always, a lot of fucking gross dudes will look to situations and go, well, it's not like they just held you down and fucking said I'm raping you and rape you, right? Like that's what they use to basically fucking defend other instances, you know what I mean? Of like, I guess, lower forms of sexual assault, even though it's like, 
you know what I mean? Like it's still sexual assault, but it's like a lower version of that. Like if we're, if we're looking at this like weird hierarchy of, of rape, there is like the rape rape at the top, I guess of like a random stranger, what you would see in like the movies, random stranger sees you in a fucking, uh, you know, dark alleyway, starts raping you. That is like at the high, uh, that's at the height. The most common version of that also is the, the one rung above that, which is like a person that you know, but is doing the hold you down and, and brutally rape you. Okay. If we're doing a tier list of that, like this is at the, the, the peak. Okay. And even then, even then, it's like, even then, it's it's just still not enough for so many people. Vice World News has spoken to a friend who confirmed the details of the conversation. We are not naming her to protect her and Amelia's identities. Amelia said that for a very long time, she was in denial about the alleged rape, feeling that acknowledging it happened would negatively define her. To this day, she struggles to even use what she refers to as the R word. It's like if this R word is what happened to me, then that's what I am. She continued to see him for a number of months afterwards, including having consensual sex. This was partly, she said, to buttress her denial response to the alleged assault at the time. If I go and see him again, I want it this time. Then I'm not being degraded. Then it's not the R word, she said, explaining her thought process. So that's what I did. I was like, right, I'll see you again. You haven't taken that control out of me. You haven't hurt me. Of course, when they see that, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's like the same as... Again, this is why I said this is like a super common way that rape happens. Sexual assault is not commonly in a fucking dark alleyway by a stranger. Sexual assault is most commonly conducted by people who are close to the person. Okay? Boyfriends. Partners. Husbands. This is how it usually happens. Relatives. Okay? Friends. That is the most common instance. That is usually how it happens. It's someone you know. It's not someone you don't fucking know. It's not someone in a dark corner, in a dark alleyway, a random stranger, okay? So that is, uh, it, you know, th this kind of thing happens regularly with victims of domestic abuse, with victims of domestic violence, with victims of sexual violence, okay? Um, they want to, they're traumatized, they don't know how to deal with it, so they continue uh, trucking on as though things are normal and things are good, hoping that like that will give them a sense of autonomy over their conditions. Okay? So just understand that. So cops should know that. But they don't. Fiona Vera Gray, Deputy Director of London Metropolitan University's Child and Women Abuse Studies Unit, said Amelia's actions in the aftermath of the alleged rape were not an uncommon response. The social construction of a woman who has been raped is someone who is weak, who is stupid, who cannot protect herself, and that she has damaged goods. No one wants to identify with that. It makes absolute sense to me, and I'm sure to anybody, why you would want to do what you can try to reclaim a sense of agency over that narrative. It sounds like that's what she tried to do before she got to a point where she was like, actually, there's no other way to understand this because I've been violated. Amelia said she eventually broke things off with Tate after he invited her to go away together for a weekend for the first time. That was when I woke up. I realized if I spent a whole weekend with him, I might end up in a hospital. It wasn't until 2014, about six months after the alleged rape, that Amelia filed a complaint with the Bedfordshire police, feeling that she finally had the strength and clarity to do so. But she found the experience extremely demoralizing, she said. At the time, she had only recently accepted what had happened to her after months of denial, was hugely traumatized, and relied on a friend, a different person, than the one she called after the alleged rape to help speak on her behalf as a support person during the interview. At one stage, Amelia said the investigating officer asked her friend whether Amelia had learning difficulties because she had struggled uh, speaking. That made me feel so small. Like, I can't even be emotional, Amelia recalled. I can't even feel how I'm feeling because you're trying to put me down. This perceived dismissive attitude combined with her trauma and ongoing fear of Tate left her feeling unable to pursue the complaint and she instead opted to log it, recording the allegation with police to potentially pick up again where she felt stronger. Amelia focused on moving forward with her life, starting a new career and moving to a new town. But in 2015, she received a call out of the blue from an officer of the neighboring police force, Hertfordshire Police. The officer told her the force was looking into complaints from two other women who also had made complaints of abuse, including one of rape and another of repeatedly strangling a woman against Tate and asked whether Amelia would be happy with her complaint being included in that investigation. These are the same two women who went public with their experiences in interviews with Vice World News. I literally broke down and went, yes, I am. 
recalled Amelia. I felt stronger. I felt like, okay, I'm not alone now. I got two other girls. Amelia provided a video statement to the police at the time and handed over her phone. It contained voice notes and messages from Tate, including, according to Amelia, the same messages and voice notes that were reviewed by Vice World News, which appeared to corroborate her account. We've listened to some of those voice notes. These messages include an exchange that took place after an alleged sexual assault and while they were still seeing each other, in which Tate wrote, I love R-wording you and watching you let me while still debating if it's a good idea or not. Monsters are monsters, he wrote. When you're under my control, I do whatever I please. Another exchange took place after Amelia stopped seeing him. Tate initiated it, sending her an unsolicited video that showed him breaking a baseball bat on his shin and following it up with a voice note saying, I am one of the most dangerous men on the planet. Sometimes you forget exactly how lucky you were to get fucked by me. Bro, he's... Not only is he like a violent, weird... Like, he's like a violent fucking person, but he's also such a goober. Like, he's such a fucking loser you know what i mean like that this is loser shit bro like this you're not an anime villain dog you're a bald fucking weirdo okay i know that like that that i'm not saying this to undermine the severity of the violent crimes that he has committed against women so frequently but he's like such a chinless such a chinless bald insecure motherfucker who's like yeah i'm a dangerous villain it's like, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? You are literally, like, you you are such an insecure go goober. Like, it is mind-boggling to me. He's goofy as fuck! Three, four, four. <laughs> the wall! Wait, he sent this to her? This is the video that he sent? Stop. Five grand. Five grand. Motherfuckers! Five grand. Eat shit! <laughs> When Amelia responded by writing that she wouldn't call it lucky to have been strangled, pinned down, and forced to do something you knew I didn't want to do, Tate sent a voice note saying, Am I a bad person? Because the more you didn't like it, the more I enjoyed it. He followed up with a voice note asking if she would like him to pin you down and make you do things you didn't like, and another telling her, You didn't like that I was thinking I could do whatever I want to you. That's what it is. I'm the smartest person on this fucking planet. Dude, what the fuck? Does he have like, is he bipolar or something? Like, what, what is this manic... This is like unironically like something that, you know, I've heard people in, in uh, manic states say, okay? It might be just cocaine. I don't know what it is. Like delusions of grandeur is, is you know, it, that is what this is. It's like, I'm the most dangerous motherfucker on the planet. I'm the smartest motherfucker on the planet. Like, no, you're not. You are literally not a very intelligent person. You are demonstrably not a very smart person. And I say this as someone who is a dumbass, okay? I'm not a very smart person, but at least I'm smart enough to recognize that I'm not a very smart person. And even I was able to fucking destroy this fool, okay? So clearly, he is definitely not a very smart person. Jesus, fuck. Please read my last message. Nothing I hate more than motherfuckers saying read my last message. I'm sorry. I'm sure. I hope it's a good one. Okay. It is a, it is a good one. But I just I get so fucking annoyed when you guys do this. You spam and you go, read my last message. I live in England and personally know someone who was assaulted by one of my own friends. We reported him to school multiple times and authorities with hard evidence, DMs, multiple eyewitnesses, etc. It was completely dismissed by both the school board and the police. They didn't even reach out to his parents. Shit's crazy. The most fucked up thing is I'm pretty sure they didn't believe us because we were teenagers. Bite him? First of all, I have said this already. Andrew Tate is a professional kickboxer. I, I like there is no like I would not win that fight. I don't know why some of you dumb ape brained idiots think that that is alone for him to be the champion then. Okay. Also, how am I gonna fight him? You want me to go to fucking Romania and like get myself in prison? You want me to go commit crimes in Romania so I can be in prison so we can have a fucking bare knuckle brawl in prison? Is that what you want me to do? Yeah, let me just drop everything. 
that's not going to change the, the reality that he is a rapist and a sex trafficker. You know what I mean? That's not going to change anything. You know that, right? Like, I know how much you want to feel like might makes right, but first of all, by those standards, I still beat your fucking pasty little ass. Okay, so remember that. Just because, like, a professional kickboxer, I admit that a professional kickboxer could beat my ass, doesn't change the reality that, like, you know, you can. You, you, you're you just a fan of his. You don't have the Bugatti. You don't even have the fucking sex trafficking uh, ring that he has. You have nothing. You're just a guy on the internet repeating what he says, thinking that that makes you him. You are not him. You have 100 pounds on him, you'll be fine. Yes, you guys know nothing about organized sports, whether it be combat sports or whether it be professional sports, which is why you maintain that position. Being 100 pounds heavier than a fucking professional kickboxer does not change the reality that, especially when he's six foot three, he can still fucking kick my head, okay? You are just so silly. I've had this conversation so many fucking times. It's the same as basketball, okay? No. Weight classes don't fucking mean shit, dude. You think you could beat Mighty Mouse? You think I could beat Mighty Mouse? That motherfucker is a third of my body weight. He would whoop my ass sideways, okay? Shut the fuck up. It's so silly. It's so dumb. You guys are so dumb. You don't know anything about any fucking organized sports weight classes only matter between professional fighters and i'm talking for those of you saying like oh mighty man this is a cartoon no i'm talking about demetrius johnson asmund gold fan and sometimes occasional twitch streamer why do autistic people always want to fight you <laughs> It's because they, they don't have the good kind, okay? Like uh, being in tr interested in city planning, trains, that sort of thing. And they have the bad kind, which is being interested in 4chan and poll memes and thinking that that is a good substitute for a personality. That's it. That's literally it. It's like, it's the, the which way autistic Western man meme. And it's like, be normal and like normal things. You know what I mean? Video games, all this sort of stuff. Or they're beyond the other side of that. Go the right way, which is like extremely fucking deep fried memes about politics that lead you astray and make you a fan of a fucking, you know, weird, gross, washed fucking Nazi comedians who I, I feel weird even calling comedians really. You know what I mean? And just saying the N word in public, that sort of thing. Like that's what they're into. As an autistic person, I do not want to fight you, but there's also no such thing as good or bad autism. It's just good or bad people. Yeah, no shit. It's a joke. That's why I said good autism versus bad autism. Just like sometimes I say girl autism. Like, it's a joke. Not, yes. No shit. The fact that I have to describe jokes like this one all the fucking time implies that you are not alone. If, you, if you're like, oh, I'm autistic and I'm watching the Hassan Ivy broadcast, you probably know you're surrounded by other autistic people, okay? A big percentage of the fucking community is neurodivergent. Anyway, getting back to the fucking uh, matter at hand that we were talking about. He then wrote, I can't believe we just, like, we took such a brief, uh, such a weird sidetrack here. He then wrote, you were my whore when I had my hands on you before admonishing her in a voice note for being upset about the alleged rape. Are you seriously so offended I strangled you a bit? You didn't fucking pass out. Chill the fuck out. Jesus Christ, I thought you were cool. What's wrong with you? Hertfordshire police confirmed to Vice World News that Amelia's complaint led to Tate being arrested on suspicion of rape in December 2015, the second time that year he was held, questioned, and then released under investigation following earlier complaints by the two other women. But despite the new allegation from Amelia being added to the investigation, the case moved slowly and police did not pass the case file to the CPS, whose job involves assessing whether there is a realistic prospect of conviction until 2019. That's like four years where, you know, he is running free, doing whatever the fuck he wants. You know, it's just so fucking gross. 
running around, avoiding the top of the hour ad break, which comes at the top of every hour, probably even subscribing if he wants to, uh, by, by, uh, you know, getting a $5 a month subscription or a free one in the form of a Twitch prime or by getting gifted a sub even, you know what I mean? It's fucked up. But at the top of the hour, it comes for all regardless, whether you like it or not. Sidekick Nolan, thank you for the five tier one gifted subs, allowing five people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour. Here's a three-minute ad break now. Abigene, thank you for the five get the subs. The Gravy, thank you for the five get the subs. Healthy Policy, thank you for the five get the subs. In response to a new request for comment, the Herefordshire police said in a statement that the investigation had passed through the heads of three separate officers in charge of OICs during those four years. Investigative, uh, investigations into sexual offenses by their nature can be challenging and complex due to their lengthy nature. It can mean that investigations have more than one OIC, said one statement. Ashkan Kiani, thank you for the 10 gifted subs. Patty Penn, thank you for the 5 gifted subs. When a delay was identified, action was taken the to progress the investigation as quickly as possible. Heard for sure police has previously acknowledged to Vice World News that it apologized to complainants over the delays in handling the case. Oh, they apologize. It's fine. In late 2019, Amelia was informed by police that the CPS had finally reached a decision. She had said she attended a meeting with a police officer who delivered the news that the CPS has declined to prosecute. Oh, that's so nice. Guys, it took four years for them to come up with, uh, yeah, we're not going to fucking prosecute, actually. Thank you for your time. Rapist roams free. I went to the police officer. Well, explain to me why you're letting a monster on the street, Amelia said. Amelia said the police officer even apologized for the de decision and told her words to the effect of, it's not that the police don't believe you. It's not that the CPS don't believe you. It's that there is an ounce of doubt in the case. Oh. Got it. According to Amelia, the officer said the element of doubt related to the fact that she had consensual sex with Tate in the wake of the alleged sexual assault and that in sexual assault cases, the CPS was only prepared to prosecute when it felt 100% confident of success because the trial resulting in an acquittal would only further traumatize the complainant. You know what doesn't traumatize the complainant, though? Letting the rapist go free after conducting a four-year halt on an investigation and then finally taking four years out to say hey by the way we're not prosecuting it's for your own good by the way that we're not prosecuting that's fucking sick dude that's 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 sick that's cool that's i love that that's great thank you yeah victims famously love when uh the the person that they are trying to put behind bars so they like fucking stop other people from getting uh, uh, raped, uh, you know, they they love when that person is not prosecuted. That's like their favorite thing. How your fight with an MMA fighter will probably go. So he died, I guess, right? <laughs> like, what the fuck? Look at his eyes. Just straight up dead. Uh, anyway, where the fuck were we? According to Amelia, the officer said an element of doubt related to the fact that she had consensual sex with in the wake of alleged sexual assault. A friend of Amelia is a different individual from either the one she called after she was raped or the one who initially accompanied her to talk to the police. She had brought along to the meeting as a support person, corroborated her account of the police's comments to Vice World News. Heard for sure police would not confirm the officer had made the comment, saying it would not comment on the specifics of an investigation. Amelia was left devastated by the decision, which she felt betrayed a lack of understanding of the psychology of abuse of men like Tate. Looking back, she said, exerted emotional control over her through his domineering and manipulative behavior. Tate is facing a similar 
Tacey's facing similar allegations of using physical violence and mental coercion to recruit and groom women into working for his sex business in sex webcam business in Romania. I was like, what's your, did my fucking view count unironically go up by 4k when Pornhub went down? Is that what's going on right now? Come on guys. Sh shut the fuck up about Pornhub. Like, look at this. Look at what we're talking about right now. Like, please. Time and place, man. Time and place. Huh. I was like, what's your excuse for this justice system? She recalled, no one has been manipulated before. No one's had Stockholm Syndrome before. No one's been abused before. Experts in the field of sexual violence say that uh, the fact that Amelia had consensually slept with Tate again after the alleged rape should not be viewed as somebody undermining her case, uh, somehow undermining her case. The fact that it had been was an indictment of the criminal system, uh, criminal justice system's handling of sexual assault cases. It shouldn't be seen as a weakness. Uh, she said, due to the justice system's flawed approach to rape, which heavily scrutinized the actions of the accuser rather than the accused, the overwhelming majority of cases were never prosecuted because of how they would likely play out in uh, court. Trigger warning, but it feels mentioning regarding this police force. I know someone that lives in this area. This police force covers. They were recently called out, called about their report uh, of rape from 2011 because the offender had reoffended. It was getting charged in 2021 for the third offense, all of rape. And they wanted her testimony to further charge him and put him away for longer. It ruined her entire year mentally going back to what happened to her. Super fucked. Yeah. Three, dude. Three over the span. And then, like, I feel like you, one, you reopen these wounds, right? They're, you're reopening trauma. And then on top of that, you also kind of feel like you're responsible because you didn't do enough you know what i mean you didn't you weren't somehow you were unable to put this person behind bars to like get them to stop from doing the awful thing that they did to you and that is another like uh that is another like additional compounding factor here meanwhile it's not your fault and you should not have survivor's guilt you should not feel bad about this it is not your fault at all it is absolutely the fault of the systems that we live under and the fucking police force that is supposed to be doing this it's supposed to be doing their job, but they're not. Vera Gray said many rape complainants had encountered similar response from police prosecutors. We already know that. I mean, the rest of this is just like systematically uh, uh, and, and brutally assessing the... Uh, sorry. The, the rest of it is an assessment of the systematic avoidance from uh, UK authorities on behalf of like sexual assault cases. And uh, you already know. You already know how this fucking ends out. We covered it before. She said Amelia's story was appalling but unsurprising. In the wake of the 2019 decision by the CPS not to prosecute uh, Tate, Amelia has uh, focused on putting sexual assault behind her. But Tate's rise to global fame sent her recovery backwards. The online abuse of Tate's accusers by his army of supporters was hard to take. <laughs> Since he became famous, every day has been torture. I'm like, are you joking? That's not supposed to happen. Someone that's abused you, hurt you, isn't then supposed to become world famous and then be in your face every day. Like the two other women who filed complaints with police over Tate's alleged abuse, she feels that the failure of police and prosecutors to get justice in their case had allowed Tate to continue what now appears to be a clear pattern of misogynistic and abusive behavior towards women, ultimately leading to his arrest in Romania last month. You know that he is now a God complex knowing that he can get away from any of this. Tate's arrest in Romania and the decision by our fellow complainants to come forward publicly with their allegations have been only the po the only positive development since her ordeal began, she said, but made her hopeful that Tate would eventually be held accountable for his alleged abuse of women. Approach for comment on Amelia's allegations, Tate's lawyer said he was too busy dealing with the Romanian case against his client to respond to old allegations. When Reese subsequently by phone, he said he had been too busy to reply to an email outlining the allegations and hung up when asked if he was planning to respond. Now, here is the clip, of course, famously, of Andrew Tate explaining why he moved this to Romania. Now, totally that's the wild part about this is that, like, he got away with doing, like, rape multiple times in the UK 
and still was like, that's not enough. Like, it's not enough. The, the, the fucking demonstrable abject failure of the UK police force in prosecuting Andrew Tate for his sex crimes was not enough for him. He still felt like there was scrutiny. So he was like, I'm going to Romania instead. And if you don't believe me, if you don't believe me, listen to the man's words, okay? This is probably 40% of the reason I moved to Romania because in Eastern Europe, none of this garbage flies. If you're going to go to the police and say he raped me back in 1988, you're going to say we should have done something about it then. If you're going to the police and say he raped me yesterday, say, okay, if you've got physical evidence, or right, is there CCTV proof? Where to happen? Okay, let's go interview him right now. And if it wasn't really right, oh, that's, oh, we went to the club, we got drunk, she agreed to go back to my house, we started having sex, and then we carried on having sex, and then we had sex, and she didn't say anything wrong, and then she texted me afterwards, and I didn't text back, and now she's saying I raped her. The police would be like, okay, she's an idiot, bye. But it, it, no, not in the West. In the West, you can tell them that exact story, you're still fucked. You're fucked in the West. When people say, why did you in Romania? And I explain my five reasons. One of them is the Me Too era. They go, oh, well, you're a rapist. I say, no, I'm not a fucking rapist. But I like the idea of being able to just say, to, to do what I want. I like being free. And if you're a man living in England or Germany or America or any of the Western world right now, you've decided to live in a country where any woman, any ex, any fucking bitch who works at Greg's who you bought a pasty from, at some point in the future can destroy your life. This Me Too era bullshit has not protected women. It's just destroyed the safety of men. There you go. Uh, contact for further comment regarding Amelia's allegations. The CPS said it had nothing to add to his previous statement, the Vice World News, regarding the investigation. The statement read that the prosecutors had carefully reviewed all the evidence provided by the police regarding each complainant and concluded it did not meet our legal test and there was no realistic prospect of a conviction. That's crazy. Survivors' interviews will be included in an upcoming Vice World documentary. Reporters Matt Shea and Jamie Tassin visited Tate's compound in Romania in the summer of 2022 and gained access to the Tate Brothers' so-called secret society, The War Room. Big Pharma's goon. Thank you for the five tier one gifted subs. Um, yeah, every time more information, you know, forgive me, but every time new information comes out about this Tate guy, I think to myself, he doesn't strike me as a good fellow, okay? Here are some of the shocking new transcripts from the Tate Brothers case. Do you want me to be your slave or your wife? I didn't like that the girls called you our king. Here's some evidence presented by the DICOP prosecutors that, it, uh, that Tate was behaving in an aggressive, uh, engaging in an aggressive behavior on a regular basis. There, the man who tried to convince her to tattoo his name as he had done with other girls, told her that she was a slave. Andrew Tate, you need a big clap or my name. Girl, no tattoos, baby. I hate tattoos. I'm cool with people, but not me. Andrew Tate, if I told you to put my name in a tattoo, you would. So you better hope I don't want that, and I don't yet. Girl, so you don't want what I want? Andrew Tate, you want what I want. Girl, then it's good. You don't want me to get a tattoo. Not yet. It would be important to me, but first I need to see that you're worth it. Girl says, how many girls have your name? Two. I think we need to focus more on our relationship and external things than external things. You will write something else, something beautiful. I want to stay pure. Pure women submit to their men. Where's my dinner? Baby, don't talk like that, please. You know I want to make you dinner. Just waiting to get to you. Slave. Girl says, please. Andrew says, belt. Girl says, do you want me to be your slave or your wife? Andrew Tate says, you'll do whatever I tell you which is the same thing. If I choose a woman to be my wife, she will love me enough to let me tell her what I want. I will decide if she's a slave. Hey guys, remember when everyone was like, oh, he's just joking, right? He's just joking about this stuff. Well, it turns out he's not fucking joking. Like he's just like straight up, this is how we behaved, which makes it, which brings us to an impasse, okay? And this is the, the, the point where people go, this is the point where we all recognize there are people out there who recognize that this is real and not a joke, and go, I fucking like that. You know what I mean?
Just trust me and shut up. Don't piss me off again today. It doesn't matter if I call you a slave. It matters that I can, if I want to do it without you being stupid, there are enough stupid women. I want to, if I want to accept, I have 10,000 options to choose from. You have to accept that you're mine forever, no matter what, but why bring that up? What do you mean? Why bring what up? Why bring up what? That like Andrew Tate has fans who believe this is a good thing? You think that's not important to bring up? You have to accept that you're mine forever, no matter what I do. And if you want me to behave more nicely, you will convince me with tenderness. In the context of the discussion, Andrew Tate explained to his slave what the girls he lived will do in the studio. And they have a live show on TikTok that makes a lot of money. Then why does he have to work for Georgiana? They can do it themselves. I can't, not properly, not at the top level. They have big teams behind them advertising them. They work on them 24-24. Those girls make a lot of money. It's not amateurish. Girl, don't get angry. I'm just curious. I want to know why you brought me here to this house. If you respected me, you'd ask me first if I was okay with this. I thought I would come here to live with you. I don't know why you said 24-24. It's a little weird for me to have to... Uh, for me to have you hang out with girls who work for you, especially since you had a thing with one of them. He told me there was nothing between the two of you and that you take care of her like a brother. I'm not stupid. I know there was something more. That was in the past. You put me in the same house as your ex who is still in love with you. I mean, for real, you know that. You're not listening to me. I didn't like the fact that, that girls called you our king. I mean, I don't like the share, but I knew you wanted this and I did it for you. Brothers Andrew and Tristan Tate, as well as Luana Alexandra Radu, a former police officer of the 7th P uh, Precinct, and Georgiana Nagel, were remanded in custody uh, two, days after, before the new, two days before the new year after being accused of having, in 2021, constituted a criminal group organized in order to commit... Uh, on. Sorry. I didn't fucking... A dumbass shit. Okay. Um, accused of having, in 2021, constituted criminal group organized to commit crime of human trafficking in the territory of Romania. We already covered all that. And the victims were later transported to uh, and housed in buildings in Ilfov County where they're, or by exercising acts of physical violence and mental coercion through intimidation, constant surveillance, control, and invoking alleged debts. They were sexually exploited by the group members by forcing them to do pornographic manifestations with a view to the production and dissemination through social media platforms. So we know the rest of that. So, that's another update. Also, Andrew Tate's stance keep crying that the U.S. Embassy in Romania set him up as a part of some conspiracy. Here's his own lawyer explaining that the Tate brothers immediately requested and were granted U.S. consular a 